There are times you're in situations and you feel the presence of God is not even near. You feel, what's happening? Where is God? I don't feel his presence. I, 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 I think he's a, a little bit far from me now. And you ask yourself, God, are you there? I can't hear you. I can't feel you. I, I can't see you. I can know where you are. God has promised us his presence. He's promised us his presence always. He'll always be near us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He, he's promised us, I will be with you wherever you go. I will be with you wherever you go. When he says wherever you go, it means exactly what he says. God is not a man that he should lie. He's not a man that he can say, I'll be with you. And then he means something different. He just says, ah, I was kidding. No, God does not do that. When he says something, it means exactly what he says. And he has promised us his presence. He said his presence will always be with us. Now let's, let's go and check about the promise of his presence. This is exactly what we'll be speaking about today. The promise of the presence of God, okay? In the book of Isaiah 43, from verse 1 to 2, God tells us about his presence and he gives us this promise. He says, but now says, but now thus says the Lord that created thee. Now he said, now this is exactly what I'm telling you. I am the one who created you, O Jacob. And he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. He tells us, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called thee by thy name. You are mine. Now, some people may say, oh, this is a message to the Israelites. No. Let me tell you, the Bible the Bible has people who are called the elect. Now, in the Old Testament, the elect of God were the Jews. In the New Testament, the elect of God are, is everyone who believes the gospel. So this message is for everyone who believes the gospel. Jesus he says here, uh, God, he says, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. You are mine. You see, when we believe the gospel, we become the children of God. And he will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. The Apostle Paul tells us so many times that nothing will ever separate you from the love of God. I'll always be near you. God says he'll always be near you. Not things above, not things below, not things present, not things to come, not things anywhere will ever separate you from the love of Christ. So he will always be near us. His presence will always be there. He's promised us. And let's also check in Isaiah 43 verse 2. He says, When thou passest, though the, uh, when thou passest, passest through the waters, or when you pass through waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. And, and so forth. Now it says, when you walk through waters, there are sometimes you feel life is like many waters. It's like I'm walking through a, 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 a you know, very mighty rushing water. And I feel like things are carrying me and things are really moving fast. And I can't do anything. I'm, I'm stuck between, I'm stuck between this and that and, and go, look, I'm at the middle of water. I I don't understand myself anymore. I, I am lost of words. I am lost of my thinking. I don't know where to start or where to go. God says, even in that worst situation, he will never leave you. He'll always be there next to you. His presence is near with you. He is there. He understands your pain. He knows you. Because remember one thing. There's a the, the mystery of indwelling of Christ. Jesus is in you and you are in him. So he can feel what you're feeling because it's inside you. He can know. He knows our thoughts, our feelings, our everything. He knows them because he's inside us and we are inside him. And he can see our situation. He can see where we are right now and what is really bothering us. And he says that he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. There's nothing which will ever separate us from the love of God. And remember also another thing. Despite of Jesus being in us and us in him, also the Holy Spirit is sealed inside us. Ephesians 1.13 in whom you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom you believed, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed. 
The Holy Spirit is inside you. He can feel your pain. He can feel your things. Remember what Jesus told us just before he left. He said that I'm leaving to heaven, but I not leave you as orphans. I'll give you the Holy Spirit who will abide with you forever. I'll give you the Holy Spirit. Who is your comforter? Your, I'll give you a comforter. He'll comfort you in tricky situations. In times that you feel that his presence is not here, the comforter will comfort you and tell you, no, 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 Keith, it's not the way you think. I am still here. I can feel your pain. I can feel your situations. I can feel the way you're desperate. I can feel the way you've lost your jobs. I can feel the way you're feeling right now. I can feel everything. I can feel your pain. I can feel those people who have left you. Those people have left you because you didn't have money, because you didn't have that. Because you're not admirable like you were before, because be, before things went haywire. He can comfort you and he can tell you, don't worry, there's a kingdom which is coming and you will be there. I will help you through this. I'll be with you through this. God has promised us his presence and he'll always be with us. So don't you worry about what is happening in your life. Don't you worry about what is about to happen, about the situations ahead. I know this time uh, where we have this pandemic, so many people are worried. How is the future going to be? How's the future of my children? How's the future of things? What, what's going to happen? I don't know. I can tell the future how, what, how it holds, I, I can tell, I can feel, I can know. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I don't understand my situation anymore. I don't understand my finances anymore. I don't understand my spouse anymore. I don't understand my family anymore, my country anymore, my politicians anymore. I don't understand the situation anymore. God saying one thing, that I know, I know, I know, I know everything that you're feeling. I know everything that you're going through. I know. I've seen it. I can feel it because I'm in you and you're in me. And the Holy Spirit is inside you sealed so he can feel every, everything which is happening. And he says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Everything which is happening, I'll always be there. I'll always give you guidance. Don't you worry. So how can you, how can you get the promise, this promise of his presence? The only way you can get the promise of the presence of God is if you believe the gospel. If you believe the gospel, then the Holy Spirit is sealed inside you. Who is your comforter? And the only way you can get the Holy Spirit to be sealed inside you is through believing the gospel. Unless you believe the gospel, you can never get the comforter. Who is the Holy Spirit? I want you to believe the gospel today. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which you received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory which I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, and that he was buried and that he rose again. His death, burial, and resurrection was for your sins. The, then you're saved. You're saved. You can never lose your salvation because the Holy Spirit is sealed inside you. And the Bible says in Ephesians 4.30 that do not grieve the Holy Spirit in whom you sealed unto the day of redemption. He sealed unto the day of redemption. The day that you are redeemed of this body. This body of sin, this body of problems, this body of pain, this body of... Uh, uh, of I don't know, it has everything bad, will be redeemed and will go to heaven. And it can only happen when you believe the gospel, when you listen to God, and when you see what he's saying to your life. When you believe, you are going to be saved. Brothers and sisters, believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. Believing the gospel has nothing to do with stop sinning. Stopping sinning is the work of the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will convict you unto righteousness. There are those people who say, oh, if you want to get saved now, stop sinning, come. No, God says, come the way you are. Come with your sins, come with your burdens, come with your problem, come with your drunkenness, come with your fornications, come with your uh, stealing, come with your everything that you feel. No, come with it. Come with it and just lay them at the cross and just say, Jesus... I believe the gospel. I believe you did this for me. I believe all these things that you've done, you've done them for me. And I receive the atonement that you've given unto me. I believe you and I receive that atonement. And now I'm looking forward. I'm putting all my trust in you. Literally, literally when we talk about the word repentance, repentance means a change of mind.
It says, change your mind from what you used to believe to believe in Jesus Christ. Change your mind from doing uh, the things towards the flesh and doing the things towards the spirit. Change your mind from what you once believed or you never believed and start believing in Christ. It's all about the change of mind. Who do you believe? Remember on that day, the Bible says, Jesus will ask, there are so many people will come to Jesus that day and they'll say, Oh Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy and cast out demons in your name and do this and great and mighty wonder? Now, do those people seem to be people out of, outside the church? Yeah, there are people in the church. And why is Jesus telling them, depart from me, you that work iniquity, I never knew you. And these are people who cast out demons, they prophesied, they spoke in tongues. Why? Because they never believed the gospel. The gospel is your certificate. It's not about how good you do. If, if salvation could come by how good you do, by keeping the law, then Christ could have died for nothing. So you have to believe in Jesus. Believe in what he did for you. He did it for you. He did it for you. And when you believe that, you're saved. God bless you and have a blessed time. I, be, I believe it was a pleasure, a great time, uh, listening to the series of the promises, the promises of, uh, of God that he has promised us. Yes, I look for something else better to also speak uh, next time. Yes, there's so, so, so much that I want to uh, ask to speak together. Please, you can share these videos to other people so that they can learn and also be able to hear. Uh, if you have not subscribed, please just subscribe to this video so that you can even get much more information whenever we post. Thank you and God bless you and have a blessed time.